I got wood. Howdy, I'm Matt. And I got wood. No, really, I've got lots of wood. So today is a project day. I am building myself, finally, a new workbench to go in the orifice. So let me explain a little bit better. I'll give you, show you the problem, and I'll show you the plan. Anyway, to the desk, we'll wear it out. Was that you, dog? Very beautiful. No! Andy loves man! That is the wheel of doom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me to explain, I need to show you. Let me clear up some mess. No, I need to show you the mess. I'll turn the light off and then let's go. In short, this, all of this, is my problem. What I would like is a nice presenting desk. I've got a nice presenting area, as I'm sure many of you have seen already. I've got a nice presenting desk. However, I would like somewhere to hide mm, all of that, but not that, because it's too cute. Hey loons, you're all beautiful. Hello. Uh, you got a little grumpy fuzz? No grumpy, you're so beautiful, aren't you? This is Luna. She's my miniature schnauzer. And she's a vicious, vicious animal. Literally, she'll <laughs> lick your face off if you don't look at her. Like, Ah, uh, you know, you get my own point. Anyway, get back to the point. So the plan is I need a workbench here. So to me, explain that a little bit better. And there is a 3D printer hiding in there. There's a whole box of Depron in there. And I've got some models which I need to stash away underneath it and stuff. And I've got uh, some stuff in boxes which I'd like to use. Uh, and I also need to get my tools out and get them on the wall. So for me to explain this a little bit better, let me move to that desk and I'll straw and show you what I'm planning to do. And uh, then we're going to get it built. That's the plan, whether that happens or not. Nobody knows, let's go. So this is the plan. In short, I've got a corner here with a window sill. Uh, I've got a window here, another window over there as well. Uh, and what I'd like to do is to get a workbench in this area here, uh, like so. Now I'm gonna break it down into a couple of sections. They're really kind of straightforward. So. And you'll see me boxing this off because I've got one or two, well, two specific requirements. Uh, so on the left hand side is that I'm going to go for uh, an area where I've got boxes. Uh, you may have seen them just plastic tubs with lots of different components stored in them. Uh, and I'd like a double stacking shelf where I can get all of those parts in there. On the right hand side is that I've only got one real requ requirement, which is that I would like a trap door. So just in there is a finger hole so I can stick my finger in it and lift the lid up or lift the workbench up and then just push all the rubbish down into the hole. So under this right hand side I would like a bin bag uh, in there so that all my rubbish I can just push off the desk uh, and it goes in the bin bag. I think that's probably going to be the biggest improvement over the desk which we're working on at the moment. On the left hand side, I, you'll see me making out the frame. What I would also like on that side is this recessed, sorry, this, and also another lid, but this time bigger, so a much bigger lid, again with a finger hole in it. And what I would like to be able to do is stick my finger in the hole, lift up that section. Now, I don't worry, I'm not gonna bother a hinge, it's just a trap door is fine. And then because I'm using three by two, it's gonna be three inches deep uh, with a base in there, and it's like a hidden drawer. And I think that's gonna be a really cool idea because I could have it as a soldering station, for example, or just somewhere where I can push a project off to one side and then put the lid down on it and it's done and it's dusted. Does that make sense? So that's the plan for the layout itself. Now I will put uh, later on in a CNC project, I will put tools up on the wall and there's a few other things like I'd like to do. So for example, having a light box up here as well and a stand for the camera so it's pointing down so we can do future projects at this desk. 
But that, that's the plan. Now, it's going to be 2.4 metres wide, and you may be asking, well, well, that's quite exact, Matt. Why is that? Well, I got wood. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, so it's 2.4 metres wide. Uh, now, I'm going to go for 70 centimetres deep uh, for the actual work surface, and the reason for that is that the cutting board which you can see here is an A1 cutting board and it's about 60 centimeters deep I think I need to go and check anyway 70 uh, my plan is I'm gonna go for gonna get this correct 70 centimeters deep and now the really important one is height and the reason why height for a workbench is really important is because it depends upon its purpose so for example if you were a mechanic you would generally want a lower down workbench and the reason why you would want a lower workbench is because in most instances you're going to be needing to use your body weight to perform specific tasks if we think about a kitchen, for example, then you need something about waist height. So the mechanics workbench is below waist height. And of course, that does depend upon person to person. If you think about a kitchen, they, are st they're, well, they have a standard height, which is about waist height for most normal people. Uh, and that's quite nice because you're doing some delicate things. You need some when you're chopping, for example, when you're washing up, you need that really kind of all round access. Whereas for me, I'm actually going to go for a one meter high desk. Now that's higher than normal. And the reason why I'm going higher than normal is because I, I, I'm not going to be using lots of body. I don't need a lot of body weight to do stuff on, a, on this kind of workbench. Uh, and having it higher allows you to do more delicate work. I hope that makes sense. So the, remember, the easiest way to explain it is that if you need to put your body weight, it needs to be lower. If it's average, then you just choose the kitchen height, waist height, whatever waist height is for you. Uh, and if you're going to be doing more intricate work and you don't need either of the other two, then you go slightly higher. And that's exactly what I'm going with this. Now, of course, I can add other bells and whist whistles later. I'm sure I will do that. I'm sure we'll have follow-ups with little modifications to this bench. Uh, but the big one is to use all of that space underneath there to stick some of these models up underneath there so I can get some of my workspace back. So that's the plan. Let's go and get ourselves some wood. Oh, quick, there's a siren. Tell, tell me what you've done. Tell me what you've done. I'll tell him to back away. Chance is gone now. <laughs> right, we're off to Selco. Now, I know B&Q, Wix's and places like that are just up the road, and Selco's a bit of a drive for me, but I do prefer Selco, and their wood's always cheaper. And you're on the dash. I don't know how that's going to work. We'll see. Let's go. Round two. Oh, got far, stuck in traffic. I'm not complaining about traffic. Have you ever been to the Philippines? If you've ever been to the Philippines, you will never, ever, ever complain about a couple of cars and waiting for a few moments while it clears. Absolutely unbelievable traffic issues they have over there. Um, just nothing short of bonkers, to be sure. Anyway, soldier on. Are we there yet? <laughs> what about now? Now? Oh, come on. Don't be there. What about now? What about now? <laughs> Ooh, milk. Now? What about now? Freeway traffic lights. Oh. Not complaining, not as bad as the Philippines. Never as bad as the Philippines. Are we there yet? <laughs> now? What about now? Now? Are we there yet? Come on! So we've gone the wrong way. Are we there yet? There yet? There yet? What about now? Now? Almost there. Are we there yet? Ooh, more traffic! My favourite! Yay, 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 yay! No. Are we there yet? Yes! Well, almost. 
Come on, be right away and you shitty go. Yes, we are now here! Woohoo! Oh, let Mr. Van go. We're not there yet. He has got the biggest joint going I've ever seen. That is a massive <laughs> whopping joint he had in his mouth. <laughs> right, let's get ourselves parts up. <laughs> oh goodness me, I'm not going back that other route. Freeway temporary. Oh shh. Girl. Oh well, live and learn. Let's go. Oh, meeny miny mo. Which way shall I go? It doesn't matter. It's always the wrong way. <laughs> I'm going to the left. I'm going to hang to the left. Are you ready for this? Oh, green light. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Green light, ish. We're through. I've gone left. Do you wonder which way I swing? Left. Is that a good thing? Pass. Woohoo, 40. Bam, on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> For those of you which don't know, in the UK, we drive on the left-hand side of the road, which is the correct side of the road. It's all you mad bastards who drive on the wrong side of the road. Imagine doing it here on this little road. You'd be, well, I'd be splattered if I was driving that lorry. Oh, look, there's a wolf. Isn't it beauty? Wow, what an animal. Anyway. We drive on the left side of the road, which is obviously the correct side of the road, and everybody else is just mental. Loonies. Loonigans. Oh, big stretch. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Hello, sexy. You right, beautiful? Are you okay? <coughs> oh, big clicks. Good girl. You right? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Oh, hello. Sorry, I couldn't take you. Yeah, I know, they would have loved you in there. Yes, they would. Thank you. You gonna say woof? No? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just gonna cheat? She, you're chasing yourself. No. Sit. Good girl. Give us a woof. Yeah, good girl, good girl, good girl. That's Luna, by the way. She's adorable. Aren't you sexy? Ooh. Rah, rah, rah. Come on, let's gonna have a run rain. <laughs> now a little tip for you which have got roof racks for your car is that instead of trying to strap the timber or whatever you're putting on your roof to like the outside edges instead in scenarios like this you strap the timber to the centre brace because the centre brace is already attached to the car does that make sense I sh I, 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 I'm saying that because I struggled with that when I first started doing putting stuff on the top of cars but that makes complete sense so that whole unit is really really tight because I've put the straps over and looped them under and then when you do it up tight it grips it to this and you don't have to worry about trying to spread the load across the whole thing and uh, the whole, across the whole roof uh, anyway before we include that little tip let's get on with the build 
Oh, shit, it's stuck. Ah, is it still tight? Uh, hello? Did you come undone? Uh, don't know about you, but I quite like my fingers. Uh, see what I mean? Hmm. Shall I wrap those up nicely? Or just do that and not tell and wait for the missus to do it? <laughs> I got wood. So a big thank you to you for joining me for part one of this two or so part series uh, on creating a new RC workbench. I'm really looking forward to this and you can see me, I'm genuinely getting quite excited. So with that said, if you've got any ideas or comments on how I can improve this workbench, do let me know down in the comments section underneath this video because I would really appreciate your feedback. In part two, we're going to go and get this built. Well, we need to get it all cleared out. Then we need to go and get it built. Uh, and ironically, I've been and noticed a big chunk of timber up there, a nice big sheet of MDF, which I'm, by the looks of it, I'm guessing, is going to be my new worktop. Happy in days. So, with that said, for myself, Matt, see you again shortly. Cheerios. Howdy, I'm Matt. I want to say a big thank you to you for taking the time to watch this episode. Every single model and piece of kit which you've seen in this video has been bought by myself for my own abuses so that you know if a product is good, it's good. And if it's bad, well, we kind of blow it up. <laughs> uh, shout for help now. Uh, if you're in the live version as well, um, hold on to your seat just in case you're asked to buy. F*** it out! Jesus! <laughs> safety first. Safety first. I do have my safety glass. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! What the f*** have you done? Whoa! <laughs> Alan Check says. Another on the Barbie. Alan says oh, like it's burning on the outside oh, of it now. Well, Look man. at it. Oh, you know, that is the wheel of doom. <laughs> Alan, oh, Matthew, I think you should put that out now. <laughs> so with that said, a big thank you to you for taking the time to watch this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're new here, don't forget to press the like button and also to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so that YouTube lets you know when the next episode is out. So with that said, for myself, Matt, cheerios! <laughs>